All right, so I'm here with Simon from Basekit, who has been lovely enough to spend the time with me today to talk all about the upcoming Basekit and Atrium integration. First off, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit more about you, Basekit, and what led you to founding Basekit as a product? Okay, yeah, first of all, thanks for having me here. So where should I start? Yeah, we used to have a web design agency many years ago, and the idea for Basekit came out of that. We were creating websites and simple web apps for local businesses. And we wanted to find a way to do more of that, to do it quicker, ultimately to grow the agency and to make more money. So we built our own internal tool to begin with, actually, which helped us to build websites quickly, helped us to do all of the common things that we were seeing in websites and apps that we were making for other businesses. And. Yeah, we quickly realized that in itself was a product. And that's where the kind of idea for basic as a company came about, where we spun out that product to be its own business, uh, that we could then sell directly to similar users to ourselves. Yeah. So we've been going now for 15 years in total, I think maybe even coming up to 16 in a couple of months. So it's been a long and exciting journey so far. Yeah. In those early days, when we first spun out the product. We entered a competition called Seed Camp in the early days, which is like a, an accelerated program. They take in a bunch of applications from hundreds or thousands of startups at the time. And then there are a couple of winners who then go on and receive some funding and then get put out there in, into the world and into the kind of the scene, if you like, of tech investors. And so we entered that competition. We were one of the lucky winners in that. Uh, so that was an early win for us. And it really propelled us, as I say, into like the tech scene, got us introduced to investors, both over here in Europe and also in the States as well. And yeah, that helped us to really take on that first investment and to grow the business. Um, I guess I should backtrack a bit. Yeah. What is Basekit? Yeah. We haven't gone there yet. Um, so Basekit is essentially a suite of digital tools for small businesses or agencies to build websites, web stores. And so we've got a bunch of different products. We've got a website builder, which is all about just building a great looking, beautiful website that performs really well. And then we've got a store product, which is about selling physical stuff online. So if you are a company that actually ships products out to people, that's the store product that we have. We've also got a bookings product, which is for service-based businesses. So if you're not selling physical things, instead you're selling classes, events, appointments, those sorts of things. Then we've got a bookings product, which integrates with your calendar and lets you do a lot of neat things around scheduling and paying for those sorts of events. Uh, and finally, we've got a CRM, which is our most recent product, which kind of ties all that stuff together. So if you're getting form submissions from your website, you're getting purchases from your store and bookings from your booking site, it brings all of that together into like a CRM that then lets you do something with that information. Um, there's the whistle stop tour of what basically is and how we started. Awesome. So just to dig a bit deeper into specifically the market and sort of the problem space that it operates in, because first of all, the story and founding problem that you were solving is very similar to Atrium and why Vito ultimately founded Atrium out of their agency as well, which I think is a common theme among companies we partner with, which also makes sense in a way that we're all solving similar problems. In terms of yeah, Basekit yeah. and why you built it, I assume you were building with WordPress before as well. And from what I understand from this is the goal of building with Basekit as opposed to using WordPress for these builds is very much because it is a full package as opposed to something where it's open source and you can do everything because it's super flexible. You wanted something which was far more easy to build repeatable websites where you have, a, let's say, a gym website or a personal trainer's website or a restaurant website. All of these things could be done because you have the booking stuff. Now you have the CRM stuff, which I'm excited to hear more about all in one place, as opposed to having to mix and match, like from, I don't know, thousands of different choices you have when you're building with WordPress. Yeah, I think you've hit the nail on the head, although slightly more controversial take, I don't know if controversial is the right word, but we're actually not trying to replace WordPress. We have in recent years had a lot of interest from agencies, which is why we're going down this route and why we'll get to the Atrium integration and why it makes sense for us. Um, but what we're hearing from agencies that want to use Basekit is there are certain types of projects or certain for which a platform like WordPress is overkill. There's a lot of extra work you need to do to set up a WordPress website. 
like you've already alluded to, the plugins and things you have to choose to get it to do what you want it to do. Whereas actually, yeah, a, a software like BaseKit lets you do that really simply, really quickly, really cheaply as well. So what we were hearing is that agencies were turning away business. There were certain budgets and certain projects that were coming their way and they were like, but there's no point in this 500 bucks or a thousand bucks because it's going to take us too long. Uh, with using BaseKit alongside WordPress, it means they can take some more of those clients on board and ultimately, yeah, take in the revenue from that and not leave it on the table. Yeah, 100%. I don't think, yeah, from my experience using the product and testing it as well so far, I don't see it as a WordPress competitor as that, that didn't seem to me like the space that you're operating in, but very much there is this segment of websites also and the small business market, which also is one of the things that I want to ask you about is the focus on mobile first and responsive editing capabilities. So you can actually manage the site on the go. I think there's a clear focus on small business owners that want to be able to maintain the site on their own and very much don't want to be tied into a WordPress maintenance contract. They don't have the budget to spend 500, a thousand a month to have an agency maintain their site. But they would still, obviously, there is still a business that needs a website at the end of the day and have a budget. And a lot of the agencies are getting those types of leads, but not able to do anything with them just because they don't have the capacity. And I think with BaseKit, that, that op opens up a whole new realm of opportunities. So segueing into what you were talking about now, I also mean, wanting yeah. to segue into. Up until recently, or I think the goal is relatively soon to change this. I don't know if it will be before this is released or after. The only way to try BaseKit is to request a demo, but you're breaking into the agency segment and wanting to go after WordPress agencies a little bit more. So tell me about that decision. Yeah, I probably have to start then with our sort of typical business model before we started to offer the product to agencies. As you've already found out from the website, we don't typically sell directly to our users. Uh, we are a sort of B2B to C uh, product. So we sell through telcos, hosting companies, banks, and those sorts of organizations that want to give the DIY website capability to their end customers, but obviously don't want to build that themselves, or it doesn't make sense for them to build that sort of software themselves. Um, so yeah, we work with some of the leading hosting companies around the world, literally everywhere around the world, Europe, America, Asia, and yeah, equally some really big telcos as well. Like Telefonica is one of our big customers. We work with them in Spain, in South America, multiple brands. And yeah, they're taking our products, they're white labeling them. So they're not called BaseKit, they're called Telefonica Site Builder or whatever. And they're selling that on to their customers. So yeah, when you come to the BaseKit.com site, we're talking to those customers, the partners that take our products rather than to the end users that are actually using them. Um, yeah, and in more recent times, actually just earlier this year, we launched a brand called Built with BaseKit, which is our agency or freelancer or web expert focused brand. And with that, you can sign up. It's all self-service. You can sign up. You can create and pay for multiple websites and manage them all. We use a third party tool called Upmind to do that, which is a sort of industry friend of ours, owns that company. And it's a great bit of software to help you manage and bill and pay for and support all of the websites that you might create as an agency. Yeah, and that's something that's fairly new. We've taken on about just coming up to about 100 agencies now have come on board, um, but we're looking really to scale that over the coming months and years. Nice. And do you think a big part of it now is educating the agencies, like many of the ones that we have in our audience, about why they should add or should consider adding BaseKit to the offerings that they have, as opposed to just turning away the project or putting something together with WordPress that then is difficult for the end client to maintain? Yeah, 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 absolutely. It's really important, I think, to educate agencies on why you use a product like BaseKit. And I think there's two different sides, or at least two different sides to that. Um, yeah, there's looking at what BaseKit can offer in terms of its broad set of features and how that relates to some of the projects they, that might be coming in to give them the confidence that something like BaseKit, which obviously isn't the kind of comfort place of WordPress that they've probably been used to for many years, it's a totally different platform, we need to educate that, that, hey, this is very capable of solving the problems of those sorts of small businesses that are coming their way. Uh, and I think the other side of education is educating around the power and potential of the smaller budgets to scale. If you take on enough of those clients, it may be that you're doing websites for only a few hundred bucks for the build, and then you're taking on 20, 30 bucks a month for the ongoing hosting and maintenance. 
But if you can do a site in a couple of days and then you can be bringing in 10, 20, 30 of those a month, you can quickly see how that grows into quite a powerful stream of revenue for an agency. So I think it's both of those sides that where there's education needed. Awesome. And would you say from the hosting and the build side, based on your current users using um, BaseKit through the hosting partnerships that you have, is that very much the case that the cost to build, time to build, and also cost to host long-term is significantly lower than the equivalent agency, even with experience with WordPress and whatever page builder they have currently used in WordPress is almost or always lower than when they choose to go with BaseKit? I would say it is. Yeah. And I think with that comes some constraints, you know, we, we ultimately remember building a product for small business owners, but it happens that agencies have appreciated the product and probably appreciated some of those constraints. I think the reason that constraints are a good thing is when you're getting in a project that has a lower budget, you, you have to constrain that. And when I say constraints, it's a very flexible product but you can do things very quickly with the pre-built sections that we have, with the features that are defaulted, and you can get to an end result very quickly without breaking anything, with everything working perfectly, without needing to with plugins or debug anything. It's all very straightforward stuff. I think when you want to get into pixel perfection or edge case features, obviously that's where we might trip up, where there might be a plugin for WordPress that might do some of the things that we can't do. That's where we might trip up. Yeah, 100%. But I also think, I think the barrier, which I'm currently thinking in my head is a lot of agencies are always talking about with WordPress, the question of, should you add a client to give them admin access? Should they have admin access to their own site? And I think if that's a question where it's unclear in, I would say 80, 90 plus percent of cases, that would be a scenario where using BaseKit would probably make more sense because if you're worried to give a client admin yeah. access then you probably have built something that they can't maintain on their own, but they still want admin access because they've asked for it. And with BaseKit, that's something that you can, yeah. the agency can provide and offer safely. And of course, it means that the build is in a tool that they're less familiar with and they don't do as many builds with, at least not yet. So it will take a bit of getting used to, but ultimately it's something that's way easier to maintain long-term because they don't end up getting, oh, the client pulled something off and like completely took down the site or did something, uh, deactivated a yeah. plugin that we were using and relying on. Yeah. Yeah, and one of our mantras is we make it really difficult to break anything. And by break, we don't just mean take the site down or cause errors or whatever. In fact, that's pretty much impossible with BaseKit. But we mean break in terms of break the styling, break the layout. It's really difficult to make those sorts of mistakes. So really safe to give the keys to the site to your clients. Awesome. Yeah, I would say that's one of the biggest complaints I see from conversations with small business owners with WordPress is they love that they love it, but it isn't very fault tolerant in the sense that you make a simple change and based on the setup as well, I would argue this is also heavily based on how the site has been built in the first place. You make a styling change and then you need to remember to clear your cache in two places with the hosting provider and on the caching plugin level. So yeah, that alone, like having a solution where the small business owner doesn't need to think about that. And the agency that gives access to the small yeah. business owner knows that they can do a change and we don't really need to be there to like babysit that the change hasn't broken something is huge value on its own. Yeah. So switching gears to the Atrium integration, Indeed, yeah. I'm curious, I actually don't know this, even though I've been a part of the integration discussions for a while, how did you first come across Vito Atrium and how did the whole conversation surrounding the integration start? I'm pretty sure we met at a cloud fest not this year, but actually the year before 2023. Um, and yeah, we met there and it was obvious straight away that there was some alignment between the two companies. You've already mentioned where we've come from in terms of having agencies before and spinning a product out. There was some definite, yeah, kind of affinity there between us. And we were just thinking about launching this agency focused product at the time, which only just came out earlier this year, I think it was. Yeah. So having an integration with Atherin made perfect sense. And I'm from a small agency background and I'm very acutely aware of the fact that the collaboration aspect of working with a client is always the most painful. Uh, if you had everything in front of you, all the content, all the images, everything you could possibly want, anybody could build a website in, in hours or days, but that's often not what happens. So Atherin were given this solution that, that kind of streamlined all of that collaboration part and that made total sense for our agency customers 
Yeah, one hundred percent. Just from the whole mission of what Basekit is helping agencies accomplish and small business owners, it very much aligns with giving the feedback aspect of it. With Atrium, is closing the loop entirely. Now, okay, they can build the site and in a way where they can give access to the small business owner, but a part of that development process is always going to be the feedback. And with Atrium and the integration, we bring that front and center. And I think that's ultimately the goal here is to help the agencies and the people that are building with it, but also the small business owner, the same way Basekit is at the end of the day, it is a product built for the small business owner. The agency is just one of the users, but it's ultimately designed to make it much easier for the small business owner. Because I think a lot of agencies, if they wouldn't care about the small business owner, which they should because they're their customer, they would build with whatever tool they've already been building with. But the customer ultimately is first, and that's why you should build with Basekit yeah. in the scenarios where, which we talked about. And same with Atrium is sure, there's other ways of collecting feedback and you could do meetings, but is it really fair on the small business owner to join like a one hour meeting and explain what they want changed? And then also, is it fair on the rest of your team? Probably not. So I think that's exactly where it comes into the picture. So what are you most excited about going forward? You mentioned the CRM functionality, which I don't know much about. So I'm wondering, can you share more about that? I don't know how much of the roadmap you're able to give us some insight into. Yeah. Okay. The CRM is something we've launched already. It's very basic. When I say CRM, what it's doing is it's collecting customer information and transactional information into a nice user interface, which you can then do a couple of things with. So what we found out and the reason we built this product was we found out that most small businesses, most of our end users don't just use one product. Obviously they use several to get their job done. They're using web, the website builder alongside perhaps some sort of marketing, email marketing tool, social media, they're using an accounting tool. So these products need to all work together really neatly. And a lot of small businesses are not very savvy at how to do that, quite frankly. So we needed to make it as simple as possible to get the information from your website out into those other tools. So yeah, the data gets collected in the CRM. You can go and browse it and search in there, but we also have a way to export that. If you want to import it into a email marketing platform, for example. But we've also just launched a Zapier integration or Zapier. I never know quite how to say it. Um, if you're not familiar with Zapier, it's they, they basically help products join up with one another. So if you have data coming from a base kit uh, purchase, for example, that can go through a, a Zapier recipe and be pushed into, I don't know, Slack or SMS to notify you that you've had a purchase. Um, it could be pushed into a database somewhere. It could be pushed into a spreadsheet somewhere or to another app. Um, so it allows you to join up and create these fairly complicated workflows that can help you to run your business. Amazing. And out of personal interest, and also just, I think we'll also give some insight to users looking to start with Basekit and explore it as a solution to offer. How do you prioritize now at the stage where you're at in terms of what you build next? Do you make the booking functionality more complex and open it up into for more advanced use cases. I don't know, like group bookings or something that isn't currently supported. Just as an example, are you trying to, or from my understanding, no, but I want to confirm this is the goal long-term to close the gap between the booking functionality and the e-commerce functionality and what someone could do in WordPress or Shopify. Yeah. Just to give some insight into the direction of the product overall. Yeah, it's a good question. I guess in terms of how do we prioritize, there's, we've got lots of different stakeholders involved now because we've got our partners to, to take the product and white label it. We've got their customers then who are talking to our partners and then we're getting the feedback through them. Um, and of course the other side of things is like the sort of product vision, where do we want things to go and how does that line up with what we're hearing from customers? And sometimes it won't, and that's okay because you've got to be pushing a product in a certain kind of visionary direction, but in the world that we're in with lots of partners that are paying us a lot of money, it's, we also have to listen to them very carefully. And we've got very good at knowing when a feature request is really a feat, a single voice that's shouting very loudly. So we've got to get quite analytical on that. We can look at what people are doing in the product, whether they're hitting certain roadblocks. And if we identify that, and then that's lining up with what we're hearing from a feature request, then it's obvious that we might need to do that. And then onto the question of, are we trying to close the gap between what we do and someone like Shopify? We're always closing the gap, but I don't think we'll ever close it completely. We want to be a credible alternative to Shopify for a certain size or type of business. Shopify is a fantastic platform, but it runs brands that are making hundred million in revenue 
year, some huge brands run on that platform. So it clearly has to have a lot of the features that we're never going to get to uh, in our platform in terms of where our target audience is sitting. Um, but what we don't want is someone to look at our product and say, it doesn't do X and doesn't do Y, so I'm not even going to give it a go. So we're always looking to just be good enough for our target audience. Yeah. But it's, it's a very difficult part of what we do is prioritizing uh, features and figuring out what to do next. At the end of the day, the goal, yeah, closing the gap, it's not to be infinitely more complex like Shopify is because that then takes away from the original vision as well, which is to be for the small business owner and that specific segment. So it's very difficult position to be in, in the sense that if you want to listen to the people which are like, oh, but I can't do X, I can't do Y, that goes against what the entire purpose of Basekit, from my understanding, was built with from the beginning, yeah. which yeah. is to serve the small business owner and what they're looking to achieve in an easy way, abstracting away that complexity, which it, you almost can't really exactly. do to a certain extent if you want to offer everything. And I think that's also how the agencies yeah. should look at it, which are doing these builds, is you're, if you're abstracting away the complexity, aka also being able to drive down the cost for the small business clients, then you shouldn't have all of the complexity and all of the infinite possibilities that a platform like Shopify, WooCommerce, WordPress would offer if you're building something that's more complex. And I think that's why it becomes interesting for the agencies to consider. So last but not least, my question would be Definitely. now yeah. with the agency offering, you say recently launched, what would the best way to be to get started? I think the current site is still mainly focused on requesting a demo. So where should we send people to learn more? You can get to it through the basekit.com website. We've actually just revamped or we're going to be going live with a revamped version of how you get to the, our agency offering. It was called built with basic and that wasn't necessarily very clear. That's where agency should go and click. So we're going to make it a lot clearer and where we have like solutions at the top, it'll be clear, which is the agency solution. And from there, you'll be able to get through to, to sign up. Um, and what you'll get is a free website. So if you go through that flow. You'll get into Upmind, which I mentioned before, which is what helps you to manage the websites that you're purchasing from us. You'll get a free website in them. And the idea there is that we want agencies to come in and really have an opportunity to test this out, to send it out with one client for completely for free. And if they like what they see, then they can come back and buy some more sites from us. Amazing. Awesome. So learn more at basekit.com. Thank you very much, Simon, for taking the time with me today. I'm very excited for the future of this okay. partnership and integration. This is very much day one, and this is probably one of the first videos that our users will be seeing about Basekit and Atrium and our partnership. But from the looks of it, there's a lot more that we'll be doing together in terms of educating, um, showcasing how users can use Basekit and the, the segment that you're serving at the end of the day. So yeah, I appreciate you coming on. Thanks for having me. See you. Bye-bye.